Today we'll be going through some of the latest development in the Linux kernel and specifically on the Rust side of things. There have been some exciting claims being thrown around by the dev community, including some decoders that are currently outperforming their C-based library counterparts. This is exciting news. We're going to get into all of this today, including the claims, checking out some of the benchmarks, and a brief overview of how Rust has been doing in the Linux kernel. Let's first start out with talking about how Rust was introduced to the Linux kernel. Rust for Linux is an ongoing project started in 2020 to add Rust as a programming language that can be used within the Linux kernel software, which originally has been written using C and assembly only. The goal here for this whole entire project is really just to leverage Rust's memory safety features for writing things like the kernel drivers. Now, even though the adoption has been slower, we're almost in 2025 at this point. So we've had about four years of Rust and Linux. Linus Torvalds, the creator of Linux, still seems to be behind the adoption of Rust. In some of his recent talks that I've gone through, he still looks optimistic at how Rust for Linux is going to help Linux out in the future. And even on the official kernel documentation, there have been vast improvements to how to quick start into using Rust on the kernel. And there's even code documentation now available. Rust support has been merged since the version 6.1 kernel. And the goal here is to help determine whether Rust as a language was suitable for the kernel and worth the trade-offs. So you might be asking yourself what drivers or applications are actually available in Rust in the kernel. We're going to go through that in a second because that's exciting to look at. What have we done over the last three to four years? So current Linux kernel usage of Rust components include rnull, a drop-in replacement for null devices, ASIX, and Realtek generic physical layer network drivers. Some that are coming in are QR code DRM panic handler and other notable Projects include TARFS, a TAR file system, NVM Express, device drivers, which have significant performance boosts, Android, Binder IPC drivers, Acai Linux, Apple Silicon, AGX GPU, DRM drivers, Puzzle file system, read-only, EX2 file system implementation, and Nova, intended to be a replacement for the Nuveo NVIDIA GPU drivers. All fantastic things, but there's been a slow adoption of Rust in the Linux kernel. This is mainly because of an ongoing debate on whether or not the results are actually there for keeping Rust in the kernel. And I'd say this is one of the reasons Rust is significant for the Linux kernel and being actually implemented into it. Here's the claim. Memory safe PNG decoders now vastly outperform their equivalent C PNG libraries. So the claim here is that the memory safe PNG decoders written in Rust, things like PNG, Zune PNG, and, and Woofs, are significantly outperforming the, the traditional memory safe C libraries like libpng, SPNG and STB image while decoding images. The claim here is that they can perform up to 1.8 times in the latest benchmark for the libpng on x86 and 1.5 times improvement on ARM based system. Well, how is this measured? We're going to get into some of the benchmarks here. Now, if this is all true, it is pretty significant for Rust in the Linux kernel. If Rust decoders are achieving this level of performance over C and providing memory safety, well, we can all imagine why this is a critical advantage to security and stability in the Linux kernel. We're going to talk about some of the reasons to use Rust in the kernel in a little bit. But before we do, smash that like button as we get into the performance benchmarks here. As the, and why C does not perform at this level, hint, it completely does, but there are some modern limitations. Let's first talk about how it's possible that the Rust counterpart beats the C counterpart. Well, PNG format is a deflate compression, same as GZIP plus PNG specific filters that try to make the image data easier to deflate to compress. You need to optimize both PNG filters and deflate to make PNG fast. So then they talk about deflating and filtering, and this all mainly has to do with modern optimizations. This is because Rust as a language encourages and facilitates modern optimizations due to how it's designed. And the reason Rust outperforms C in certain optimizations is because of key differences in the language design. Again, the way the ecosystem and the tooling is made is different from how C is made. Rust can really leverage a modern compiler with these types of optimizations. So when you go into compile and build your code, well, C can have a challenging time trying to optimize your code. For example, some of the O levels, O1, O2, O3, can be hard to optimize to just because of the inherent unpredictability of using those optimizations because of code that might've been written, well, quite frankly, not memory safe. So a couple advantages to Rust when talking about optimizations. Now I know the community sentiment here is that, well, C can do just as good but it just has to be optimized. But the reason Rust is so good here is, well, memory safety and undefined behavior is less in Rust because it guarantees memory safety. Therefore, at compile time, this eliminates an entire class of bugs, including 
null pointer def references, overflows, stuff like that, which allows the compiler, at least the Rust compiler, to make more aggressive optimizations without the risk of some of that unpredictability that I spoke about. There's also other advantages, including things on strict aliasing and pointer arithmetic, zero cost abstractions, the way that Rust takes advantage of parallelism and concurrency. So why is it harder to optimize in C? Well, it feels like a manual effort. And with that undefined behavior, when we go to try to optimize between levels like 01, 02, 03, making more aggressive optimizations, it just becomes unsafe because of the way legacy code was written. They didn't have modern optimization techniques in mind. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of an understanding of why Rust can outperform C when it comes to optimizations. It shifts some of that safety and correctness burden to the language itself before it reaches the compiler and therefore helps developers create performant memory safe code, which in turn takes advantage of the cutting edge compiler technologies. So that's not to say that C cannot perform as well as Rust, even in these decoders. But let's continue on before we discuss some of the community sentiment and how many can't get over the fact that C is just better than Rust. Anyways, is this production ready? Yes, all three memory safe implementations of support AP and G, writing, reading, reading and writing, auxiliary chunks and other features expected of modern day PNG library. This is awesome to hear that they are ready to go to production with this thing. This thing has gotten some serious upvotes and, and is quite impressive as the results here do not underwhelm. We're going to get into those benchmarks, but before we do think about subscribing below for more videos like this, it's quite exciting to see the new Linux dev. First, we get into the Woof's benchmarks. So the Mimic benchmarks give the number of the other libraries as ship with Debian and we measure against those tests with any library that we want, including the new Rust-based one. Now this benchmark is a little hard to see. They aren't really graphing anything for us, but instead, but instead they give us in this benchmark on things like Clang versus GCC, CPU scaling, and then all the other different metrics for things like PNG. So here, all we're showing the baseline is 1x and it's using the simplified API and running different types of decoding on images in order to see what kind of improvement the new driver creates. So over here, we can look at verse mimic and see the improvements on the various different decoding. I'll just call them functions. So for example, in its counter C counterpart, it's 2.29 times faster using the function. This is all fine and dandy. I would really just want the average here to get an average improvement, but we already talked about it's in that 1.8 to 1.5 increase. Some things are a little slower as we can tell, but here's where we can kind of get into some of the more fine-tuned individual benchmarks. So if we look at some of these, we're probably interested in the PNG. So where's PNG? Here we go. Decoding baseline, decoding BPP. You can click on this one for example. And now we can look at some of the serious benchmarks for things like the PNG decoding in the SPNG or Zoom PNG versus the Rust PNG equivalent. We have a violin plot here. So it shows the relationship between the function parameter and iteration over time. The thickness of the shaded indicates probability that the measurement of the given function parameters would take a particular length of time. So quite some extensive data here. And if you're very interested in these statistics, I'm going to put a link in the description below so you can get deep into this. And the results that were shown were used with the quiet OK image format. And these benchmarks go through that use QOI bench on a collection of over 2,879 screenshots, icons, photos, and textures. The suite tests out things like compression ratios, and was put to test against the libpng and stbi image rights. We get things like the amount of decode time in milliseconds versus encoding time, and how many megapixels per second were decoded and encoded, what the size looks like, and what the decode rate is at the end. So that was really what was used in order to gather these results with the claim that it is a 1.8 times improvement over libpng on x86, and then a 1.5 times improvement on ARM, and we have the results here on x86 and 4 and results on ARM Apple Silicon. So the 1.8 times and 1.5 figures were clearly made by taking how many megapixels per second average using the image Rust PNG library versus the lib PNG C base library. And if you divide those two, you're going to get that number. AKA if I take the 375.4 and divide that across the result for the C base one, 208.9, you're going to get around a 1.8 multiplier in performance. Same thing if you do it down here, you have 256.06, we'll call it, and divide that by the lib PNG equivalent, which is 168.91, and you're again gonna get an equivalency of 1.5 times better. That's how they got these results for us, and the fact that it's been tested on a wide range of real world images, over 100,000 of them, 
these are, again, really exciting results. Now let's get into the community sentiment because it is all over the place. This has really thrown up a lively debate. The key theme here is that, that there is an appreciation for Rust for all its security features and modern design, but they also criticize the amount of complexity and verbosity that it takes in order to write Rust code. But let's not focus on that. Let's focus on the performance results here. People are arguing that the only reason these results even exist is because there's more optimizations just being made. It's not because of the code, AKA saying the trade-offs are only really in the outdated tooling. And if you optimize it at full level in C, you would have even better performance out of the C-based code when comparison to the Rust-based code. But I personally believe this is an overgeneralization. That only assumes that all the benchmarks from these decoders perform solely due to newer techniques in Rust. It totally ignores that the way Rust is designed allows developers to make these optimizations because they can take advantage of modern techniques efficiently. Therefore, let's look at this as Rust facilitating these optimizations rather than dismissing this contribution. Yes, C can perform just as good as the Rust equivalent here. But the source of optimizations come inherently because of the language and the way that it was built. It's facilitating these modern optimizations. Good luck in C trying to go between things like 01, 02, and 03 optimizations because it's very easy to just break code going between those. And if you haven't written the code in an optimized manner or even efficient code, then those optimizations don't work anyway. Rust already facilitates that. So I kind of think it's undermining the Rust rule and just calling it newer compiler techniques and optimizations is just an overgeneralization. I've heard this many times be referenced on this news, and we should solely focus on the fact that Rust is simplifying the path to highly optimized and secure software with performance improvements. We'll see how the debate goes on about the trade-offs between legacy systems and modern programming paradigms, but clearly there are significant performance improvements with modern based languages. And finally, just a little more lore on the history of Linux. Traditionally in C and some optimized assembly language were needed, but they also briefly experimented with C++ in 97, and it was completely abandoned. So this isn't the first time a new language has been introduced to Linux. And it was given some time before realizing it just didn't work. The same thing can still happen with Rust, but it definitely seems to be showing way more promise since initially announced in 2020. And the initial support being added in Linux kernel version 6.1 in 2022 was really just the beginning as it introduced the architecture support to add in Rust code. And now in the end of 2024, the Linux kernel has began supporting multiple Rust compiler versions and has some Rust compiled code already built into it. We're seeing improvements and I am excited to keep seeing what kind of development is made in the Linux kernel. Whatever helps make it better and more modern for our modern use cases, I'm again. Let me know what you think about these results in the comment section below. Is this significant for Linux? Let's talk about what other places we can see performance boosts, enhanced security, as we see the future adoption of Rust in the Linux kernel. If you haven't already and you made it this far, you clearly like the content. Take a moment, subscribe below. You wouldn't want to miss when new videos come out. Also, don't forget that like button. It really does help get the video out to more people. Catch me in a great community on Discord, and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching. Linux can be hard to understand, but I take the most commonly used terms, commands, and subjects in Linux, and I break them down into simple to read documents, including Linux terms, flashcards, a checklist, a cheat sheet, and a mind map. And if you're ready to level up your Linux experience and knowledge, go to learn.savvynick.com now and get access to these sheets.